hello, I'm Trevor with the Rogue Outdoor Store, and today we're going to talk about plunking and how to set up to do so. Let's get started. Let's find some rigs for you. Um, the basic idea is you're going to have a spinning glow on one end of it, and you're going to have a sliding weight. In order to set up your sliding weight, the easiest way to do that is with what's called a sinker slide. There's a few different options for that in styles, but that's your basic style that we like to use. Um, next, you're going to need some leader material. Um, you're looking at 10 to 15 pound leader for most water conditions when you're plunking. We're going to go with 10 pound line today. The basic piece that's used for plunk fishing or plunking is the spinning glow. There are a lot of different colors and choices out there. We can talk more detail about which color and why we'd use them as we move forward though. Next, we're gonna look at the weights that we're gonna use. The preferred weight style is a flat round weight so it doesn't slide along the rocks. You don't want a round weight because it will just roll down the river. Um, if, you, if you can't find these in your local store, you can use the pyramid or this style of weight here. It's another weight that works really well. It doesn't roll down the river bank. Um, you're gonna want anywhere between a four to 10 ounce weight depending on river conditions and that can change throughout the day. There's two different directions you can go with the hook. Most people use a single point octopus style hook, usually in a one to two aught size for most steelhead in the lower river. The preferred size that I use is a one aught octopus hook. Um, there are people who also will fish with a treble hook instead, a three pointed hook. And <clears throat> that it's gonna be more like this in a size three. And that gets you your basic um, plunk, plunking rig. We're also gonna do an additional step where you're going to add a plug in. You can use a maglip or a wiggle wart or a flatfish as well. And we're gonna show you how to set that up. A lot of color choices come down again to water conditions, whether the water is clear or murky and the time of the day. Um, the cerise in black, Dr. Death, is a color that has always been a favorite of many fishermen. And like most fishing, the standard chartreuse and green tends to, to be a forefront as well. So we'll start with a couple of those. Like I said, the other options can be, there's wigglers, wiggle warts, fat wigglers that can be used. Hot shot is another very popular lure for plunking. And the other thing would be the quick fish or the flat fish is another lure that can be used. Just a standard basic swivel. You don't need any fancy swivel design or anything else. Just a fancy, just a basic swivel works just fine. And a dual lock snaps. A dual lock snaps. You used to be able to attach the, le the leader for your plug to send it on down your line. And that is all we need. I've tied up the basic plunking setup here. We've got a few variations of that we'll talk about. Um, this is just a rod to use as an example that'll work just fine. It's an eight foot six medium heavy spinning rod. You can use a spinning rod or a level wine casting reel. It's a personal preference on what you feel the most comfortable with. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure you have at least 100 yards of line because you can get into some big fish that do like to run. So make sure you have a reel that's gonna have the capacity that you're looking for when it comes to that. Uh, the basic setup, if you're going to just run with a sliding rig for a spinning glow, is going to be um, a sliding weight. And the reason why we use a sliding weight is so that if the weight gets tied up in a net or in the rocks, the fish can still run without breaking it off. So it is very beneficial to have the sliding weight. And it also makes it where the fish doesn't necessarily feel the weight initially because the weight can be sitting at the bottom of the river and they can freely take a little bit of line. Next, you're gonna have a bead here below your slider. The bead is there so that it doesn't hit directly on top of your knot and on your swivel here. You're gonna go there. A uh, dual lock snap is placed at the end of your leader for your spinning glow just for ease of swapping to a different spinning glow if needed or changing leaders out. And then you're gonna go down the line and you're gonna look at anywhere from 24 to 36 inches worth of leader and you're going to have a spinning glow tied at the end. You wanna make sure you use a couple beads between the hook and the spinning glow so that the spinning glow can freely move on top of the hook and not get caught up. There's a couple options for the hook. You can use, like I said, a one aught octopus um, style hook, single point hook, or you can use a treble hook if that is a hook that you'd prefer. Once you have the basic set up here, you can then choose to expand to possibly look at putting on an additional spinning glow or a 
plug of some kind. As we discussed, there's maglips or the hot shots. There's also flatfish and quick fish that are very popular. The one that I chose to tie on today is a copper hot shot in the size 35. And you wanna tie that to a shorter leader than what you use for the spinning glow. Today I put this on approximately a 24 inch leader. And what you will do for that is after you cast the, the spinning glow out and you have your rod in, in, in location and place and your lines tight, then you will put, you will take this and you'll hook it to the end of, or to the line off coming from your rod and you'll slide it down basically like a zip line would and send it out there. When the lure hits the water, the bill will dig into the water and it'll continue sending it out just as it would if you were to place it in the water directly. Uh, and what that does to, is provides you two different offerings and two different heights in the water column and it just increases your chances to finding a fish. There's a couple different or there's many different variations and colors of spinning glows. The, the, the basic idea behind your spinning glow is you want something that is going to be darker colors, the darker colored wings when you have low light conditions or really murky water and you're going to want to go larger in size as the water gets more muddy. If you have a clear day and lighter colored water, you're gonna to wanna to go with white and more brighter reflective colors that are gonna show up better. All right, so many people ask, how am I gonna know when a fish comes by and bites? Obviously, you'll see a major change in your pole. You'll see the pole when the, when the fish loads up, but many people choose to make sure there's no question the fish is there. Bells are something that many people are going to talk about, many people are going to use. There are many variations of the bell. The cowbell the cow has been around for years and it works great. If you don't like the cowbell or you don't want to use that, you can use other items to help you see the end of your rod better. A lot of people will use a brightly colored um, piece of yarn tied to the end of the rod to make sure they can see it better as it starts to move. Or they have um, brightly colored tape or any other options there as far as being able to see it. So we're here on the banks of the uh, Rogue River today. Uh, we're out here trying a little uh, plunking along the river since it's uh, up from, uh, it's up uh, dirty water, about a foot and a half visibility. Uh, not the best uh, boat fishing water, but it is really good uh, bank fishing. Uh, most of the steelhead that are moving along the bank right now are gonna be within 15 feet of the shore, maybe even closer. Uh, so you don't wanna cast very far out and, uh, um, and hopefully some of those fish will uh, run into the gear that you like to, that you have out there. Today we're running a, a spinning glow setup uh, behind a weight, probably eight ounces of weight. And then we're gonna have a slider that we've run down it to of a plug to give the fish something else to look at. So to run a slider down these setup, you got to have you basically have a leader attached to your your plug, maybe 18 inches long, a uh, little little snap swivel. Put that on your line, and then let it let it fall down to. A, uh, we have a bobber stop or a swivel on there that will stop the plug from going all the way to the spinning glow. Okay. So you want to come out with, with, especially when you got high water, you want to come out and check your, uh, your gear probably every 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, sometimes you're out here every five minutes if it's a lot, of, if it's, if there's a lot of debris coming down. Um, but yeah, you want to, you want to definitely check your stuff because, uh, you're not, uh... and the more more debris you have on your gear, the let more weight you're going to need to use. So you got to get out and clean off the debris so you don't slide down into some other angler.